and Michael Remus. What is up, gang? Welcome to a game day edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily, game number 81 of the regular season tonight. Home game number 40 for the Winnipeg Jets and another clinching opportunity as the Jets with a point tonight can uh, make plans to host game one and two of the Stanley Cup playoffs right here in Winnipeg against the Colorado Avalanche. It's time to book that whiteout next week in Winnipeg. And uh, it seems like the Jets are putting their best foot forward with the lineup tonight. Connor Hellebuck getting the start, looking to take care of business and make Thursday's game against the Vancouver Canucks a uh, meaningless warm-up, if you will, for the real deal coming up next week against the Colorado Avalanche. We are going to be all over it. Rick Bonus spoke today. We've also got some great stuff from Connor Hellebuck, who is a big part of this heater that Winnipeg finds itself on with back-to-back shutouts heading into tonight's game. We'll hear from Bones, a little bit of Mason Appleton, and Connor Hellebuck as well. And then Mike McIntyre is going to jump on. Now, we'll obviously talk about the situation with the big club right now heading into the playoffs and what's at stake tonight. Um, no better person to talk to about the Rucker McGordy decision to go back to Michigan than the guy that was with his family last week at the Frozen Four and did that extensive piece on the Jets' top prospect in the Winnipeg Free Press on the weekend. So we'll get to all of that with Mike. Uh, then in hour two of the program, we're going to head down to Phoenix. Um, listen, this is a real tough time for uh, people in the desert that care about the Arizona Coyotes. And I know they take their fair share of shots. But as a Winnipegger that was around when we lost our team in 1996, um, you know, I really am feeling for their fans, <clears throat> the staff. Um, and we've got a great guest coming up. But uh, 27 years as the video coach for the Arizona Coyotes, now working in the media, both with ESPN and PHNX Sports, Steve Peters, about as good of anyone to talk to about what's transpired over the last little while, what's next, and why it is happening now. So uh, we'll get to that, the big Coyote story, which will officially be announced expectedly on Thursday with the transfer to Salt Lake City, Utah, but also about the future of the market with this deal and the problems around the ownership of Alex Morello. So we've got all that coming up. And uh, for people that are fired up for Seabears uh, season, huge signing this week, Jared Ogunbemi Jackson, who is, I mean, really a Winnipeg basketball legend, two-time high school MVP and champion with Garden City, uh, went out to Calgary, then has been around the world playing pro. And many people in those say that he probably is the most decorated professional that Winnipeg has produced since Todd McCullough. He's coming home to play with the Sea Bears. Really looking forward to having him on the program a little bit later on today in the final hour. But of course, we're going to focus in on the Jets and the big one tonight and the stories around the club for the foreseeable future before we get down to the desert and talk a little hoops later on in the program. Listen, before we bring in Michael Remus, we got to talk about a crazy night in the National Hockey League as well and a very, very busy night with tons of playoff implications this evening. Let me thank the wonderful sponsors that make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen each and every day. The great people at Princess Auto, Cool Bed Canada, Consolidated Supply, Little Brown Jug, the Winnipeg Jets, Wallace & Wallace, Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge, F Apparel, Canadian Club, Modern Man Barbershop, Manitoba Battery, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, 
Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club. And of course, we will get to a why not question of the day for our friends over at Not Auto Corp at Waverly and McGilvery. Welcome to everyone listening on the podcast. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Welcome to the gang hanging out live on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that thumbs up. And welcome to the brains of the operation, Michael Remus. Remo, what's up? How's wow. Wow. Really kind words. Um, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, I can see my lawn. You can go outside. Uh, we're seeing not quite playoff hockey yet. It's just around the corner. But some of the games we've been treated to since uh, Saturday had some great ones. But last night that... Uh, Detroit Montreal was awesome, and now we get a chance to see the Jets clinch home ice for the first round. Uh, that's gonna be pretty cool. Jets cracking tonight, so I'm feeling good. We got some great guests on the show. Great guests coming up for the rest of the week as we count down to the playoffs. We had uh, not record numbers, but uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. A lot of people came out after yesterday's show after the Jets won seven nothing. So I'm anticipating a lot of people uh, in chat. So what's going on, everyone? Thanks for coming in and um and yeah hit, hit the thumbs up hit the like button had a few extra subscribes yesterday so uh, feeling good well hey we're all fired up for the playoffs a lot going on in uh, playoff hockey uh right now um you know there was a uh speaking of uh, overtime we got to give a shout out to the winkler flyers last night <laughs> did you yeah. catch that ot game by the way can you did i send you the winning goal Oh yeah, because um, the call, the call is one of the most hilarious calls you are ever ever going to hear. Uh, just to set the story, um, last night the Winkler Flyers were taking on the Verdon Oil Capitals. Um, it was three to two in the series. This game went to five OTs, and uh, the Winkler Flyers won in uh, in uh, the early part of the fifth overtime um and uh, it looks like well they expected to play the uh the uh the, the steinbach pistons the pistons had to bounce back to uh set a game seven um coming up against the blizzard so great stuff happening at the mj level right now but this uh, this goal from last night, um, and, and if you uh, there was a goal, a call earlier by this individual, and I really wish I had the name to give proper credit, but it was sort of a viral clip earlier on. Let's just say that this is not uh, your your normal call. Um, he uh, got a lot of love on TSN Sports Center. I know the Nielsen Show used it, um, but this same guy was calling the game last night and as you can tell from what i hope we'll be able to play for you in a minute um it's doug roach excuse me there thank you very much and uh, i'm pretty sure he's the play-by-play -play guy for the oil capitals who uh, did not win in the fifth ot listen to this this is how it sounded last night mjhl playoffs late into the night in the fifth overtime To just hit lose the stick. Ron you turn it up. Brian coming out there. Jones with the puck. Oh, and there's a really good. Save. I can't hear it. I think the net. Oh, it hit the post. Oh, oh, I can't they're hear it. winning that. Oh, chagrin, chagrin. After a breakaway chance that was stopped, and then another chance in front that hit the post. Although it looks like the net's off right now. Winkler throws it towards the net, and uh, that uh, ends her. That ends the season for the Oil Capitals as that puck goes in and uh, the season's over. As Winkler wins in, I don't even know what overtime this is, but it's 19.09 on the clock. But it just hit. Roach, and, uh, and yes, uh, Silas, uh, are you talking about the roof daddy? That, <laughs> the roof daddy guy, there it is. Uh, chagrin, chagrin, another epic call from Doug Roach. And I listen, shout out to Doug and uh, everyone that, you know, worked so hard, um, you know, broadcasting and putting things out for, you know, the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. Um, so, man, Winkler Flyers moving on to the final. We'll find out whether it is the Steinbach Pistons 
or uh, the blizzard that they'll be taking on. And uh, Johnny Bender's fired up in the chat for the Flyers. First time the Flyers in the MJHL finals since 2002. Um, so anyways, we thought we'd start off with that, uh, re- that the, the clip. I probably watched that 15 times last night after I saw. But it was pretty wild. Just, you know, if you're following any local hockey feeds, you know, the tweets coming in as that game went later and later into the night last night. Yeah, I think I went to bed and I messaged you. I'm like, hey, this is going uh, pretty pretty lengthy here. I always get fired up for, you know, multiple overtimes. It was on, on Flow Hockey. You got to subscribe to that. You know, otherwise I may have uh, turned it on. But, uh, you know, it's getting me fired up again. Playoff hockey, it's going on in other leagues. And, uh, yeah, you know, NHL coming around. But at first, uh, a little MJ action. Yeah, we'll do something next week on the final once uh, once it is set. But uh, congratulations to all the teams and particularly the Flyers who now wait to see uh, what comes out of Game 7 for who they'll play for the uh, MJHL Championship. Uh, before we get to Jets and tonight, last night, Remus, crazy night in the National Hockey League. So much on the line in the East as this turtle race sort of comes to a conclusion The Pittsburgh Penguins had to have it last night at home. They got it done. They beat the Nashville Predators to stay alive. The Washington Capitals, a complete no-show by Boston. I think Charlie Lindgren had a shutout with 15 saves. The Bruins had four shots in the first, four shots in the second. Washington gets the win, and the Caps can clinch their playoff spot tonight with a win against the Philadelphia Flyers. If it's not them, the Detroit Red Wings have the uh, are the next up. And the Wings came back from down 4-2 in the third period. I was watching the game with the friend Ream last night. And with just over 10 minutes left and the Wings down 4-2 in the third period, somebody threw an octopus on the ice, which, of course, is the great Detroit playoff tradition. And I'm not sure whether they thought the team wasn't going to make the playoffs, so they better throw it now or we're trying to inspire the club it was with our pal balls last night. He goes, this is the turning point. Detroit's going to win this game. And sure enough, Detroit scored shortly thereafter, scored late to force overtime and then won it in OT to beat the Habs 5-4 to get the very valuable two points. And now they're right back at it against the same team in Montreal uh, tonight. Washington's playing the Philadelphia Flyers and This is from Elliot Friedman. This is a very, very bizarre possibility for this evening. Craziest possible scenario tonight. The Flyers must win in regulation to have a chance. Any kind of win by the Capitals puts them in the playoffs. What happens if the game is tied late in the third period? The Flyers have to pull the goalie, don't they? risking the Capitals clinching the playoff spot on an empty netter. Yeah, you need like a long piece of paper, you know, like when Jericho pulled out the list of a thousand moves yeah. on Nitro. <laughs> this is what you need. You need that length of paper for these playoff scenarios. Frank Cervelli tweeting it out. Basically, the Capitals need to win, and they're in. The Red Wings need a win, and the Capitals to get one point or less. Like, there's, there's just too many scenarios. The Penguins who we want to see, and we want to see Crosby in. I want Crosby. They need help because they won yesterday, but that um, that Red Wings comeback, they would have been eliminated. They were down 4-2. That was a crazy comeback. Amazing atmosphere there in Detroit. But the Penguins need to win against the Islanders, who clinched yesterday, and they need the Capitals and Red Wings to get one point or less. So uh, I don't know. I think, I think Red Wings and the Caps are going to keep it going. Uh, so we'll see what happens tonight, but... Uh, big games and uh, yeah, great atm- again. That Detroit game was awesome yesterday. Big comeback, Lucas Raymond, uh, the hero. You know, love to see. They haven't had playoff hockey in Detroit for a while. I don't know if they're gonna have it this year, but the reminder is, you know, they had who? Uh, they showed Konstantinov in the stands. Hus, that was a, a very cool moment. So they're getting fired up in love Detroit. Love to but, see Vlad up there. Yeah. What a legend. You know, mm-hmm. we. <laughs> Part of our conversation last night at the Wood while we were watching this game, we got talking about Konstantinov and did a deep dive into those Detroit teams of the late 90s and early 2000s. Mm-hmm. I mean, it like half the team are Hall of Famers. <laughs> we'll have some time to talk about some of the greatest teams of all time. That team right up there. And uh, 
man, what a what an incredible career for a Konstantinov. We were talking about Fatisov, then got into a big discourse about Nick Lidstrom and where he is among the best players of all time. Um, but speaking of the best players of all time, history made last night in Edmonton in the route of the San Jose Sharks who barely resemble an AHL team right now. Connor McDavid with his 100th assist for the season. And what's incredible about this Reem is he's only the fourth NHLer ever to do it. And you want to talk about good company? How does Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and Bobby Orr sound to uh, sit up there with Connor McDavid? Yeah, it's awesome to see scoring so high and Connor McDavid up there with the greatest of all time, 100 assist season. I think Kucherov is getting close, but you've seen some milestones. McDavid, Matthews, uh, he's one away from 70 goals tonight. Not too many have uh, accomplished that. So I love that scoring's up. You're seeing you know, very high point totals. Wasn't that long ago what Jamie Benn won the Art Ross with, well, like 90 points or something silly. So the skill and the talent, great to see him. McDavid, yeah, he's, I mean, and it's not too early to call him one of the greatest of all time, but he's got to get it done or their team has to get it done in the playoffs. And they're battling with Vancouver um, for the Pacific Division. So we'll see how it goes there. But a lot of pressure on Edmonton heading into the playoffs. But congrats on, on McDavid on a great season. Sat out a couple games, came back, and but that game was embarrassing. I mean, I was like, can they call mercy here after two periods? Like, do we need to play the third? It was, uh, I felt bad for the guys on San Jose. It's been a tough one for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> That was um, that was tough to watch. That was the old like you pull out the gift from the Rocky movie, throw in the damn towel. That, that was, was hard, the man. that was the case uh, the case last night, and of course tonight, Austin Matthews can get seventy. Um, we'll talk about this in the Cool Bet lines a little later on, but he is at Cool Bet minus one hundred five to score his seventieth goal. It looks like it's going to be the Panthers and the Leafs in the first round of the playoffs, much like the Jets and um, Avalanche played. Kind of, I think Connor referred to it as game 0.5 of the series. Very clever. Um, it is going to be uh, that game uh, that game tonight um, to uh, as a bit of a precursor going forward. Although what is interesting with Boston losing last night, Florida with a win can pull into first place. Boston still does have one more game and potentially make it a Bruins Leaf series. What well, what's a better first round series? Leafs and Panthers going at it again in Boston Tampa or yes. the Battle of Florida and Boston Toronto? Oh, sh oh man, that is a tough call. I was going to say yes to the first one. Um uh, Boston Toronto was always good. I know I kind of like the revenge aspect. We've seen Boston Toronto, you know. I think the second one. I was gonna. I said yes too early. The second one, Battle well, Florida, Boston Toronto. Well, if that's the case, then you want the Panthers to win tonight and the Sens to win tonight. Boston, after uh, a no show last night at home against Ottawa, win, and they would clinch first place, and they would clinch a date with the Tampa Bay Lightning in round one. The Rangers clinched the President's Trophy last night, and they will play either Washington or Detroit or Pittsburgh or Philly in the first round, whoever survives tonight's action in the league. But our focus, of course, is on the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Kraken tonight. It could be clinch time for home ice in first round of the playoffs. The Jets just need one point to get there. But I think they'd rather keep on doing what they've been doing, winning, keeping those goals against down, and um, putting the stamp on that Ven uh, Jennings trophy as well. It's the lineup we saw on the weekend. Don't change a thing with the exception of Nino Niederreiter returning. Nino's back with Lowry and Appleton on line three. Nemetsnikov, Iafalo, and Barron on line four. The top six, Monaghan, Toffoli, and Ehlers. Huge game for them in Colorado on Saturday. Connor, Shifley, Velarde. Defense pairings, as they've been. This, in all likelihood, is the lineup we're going to see in game one. Morrissey, DeMello, Dylan Pionk, Stanley, and Samberg. Hellebuck in the net. And uh, as we mentioned, David Gustafson, who played great while he was in the lineup, back out. And uh, I imagine, Reem, 
that if somebody goes down on the top six, I think Cole Perfetti gets a shot to go in. But I think if someone went down in the bottom six, David Gustafson's probably the guy uh, to go in just based on the role. David Gutman, he looked impressive um, with those line with Lowry and Appleton before. And one thing, you know, maybe because you know, we don't see him a lot, but man, he's a big dude. Uh, he can skate. I mean, he's listed at six foot two, fits right in on that line, and he produced. Uh, you know, he had point, you know, points on, on the weekend, so uh, he was good in that Dallas game. So yeah, I kind of agree with you there. And if you're looking for scoring, Perfetti's your guy. But if you want more of a, a two way player who's big, who can grind it out in the corners, uh, David Gustafson's the guy. So maybe he would be uh, the bottom six player. I can totally see. That. I mean, we've already seen he's the third line. I guess they don't like Perfetti in the in the fourth line role. So, yeah, no disagreement for me here, basically. All right, let's hear from Bones. Um, and, you know, we'll start this off with where this team is and how they're looking coming into tonight's game. And, again, touch wood, uh, you want to get through this game healthy, clinch home ice, and then get ready for the playoffs. But uh, Bones talked about how this team is as healthy as they've been, well, for a long, long time. Yeah, it, it, it probably is. Yeah, um, we have, we've had some hiccup. Like, even you know Tyler missing the game with the flu, like those things kind of disrupt everything. And so this would be as yeah, this is where we as close to the lineup as we could possibly have, and we're very fortunate to have the depth that we have. A guy like Gus can go in and do a, a great job for us. When Coleman in, he did a great job for us. Uh, we know Nate and Colin are ready to go when called upon, so we're fortunate to be in a position that we have that depth. Yeah, just one uh, more for me, and just yesterday you had said, you know, you'd talk to the guys, you know, do whatever it is you need to do to, to be ready. Uh, what does it say that all hands are on deck for a asterisk optional skate yeah no um, that was yesterday we wanted them all to skate today okay. yeah that was the that was their option yesterday it wasn't an option today so if they didn't want to skate yesterday we had no problem with that but we did want to put them all on the ice this morning all right so there's uh bones and you know what bones talked about you know the team mindset of the winnipeg jets right now um, and the buy-in, even from some guys who were regulars before that, you know, are now scratches. Listen, I, I give them all credit because they've all handled it like true pros. Uh, I, the coaches, we try to make sure we talk to them every day and keep them involved. Um, but that's easier said than done because they're not playing. <laughs> the bottom line, that's the worst part of a coach, telling a guy he's not playing. By far, the worst part of being a coach is telling a guy who wants to play, who's a competitive guy, he's not playing. And to get ready, just in case you're, you know, your name's called the next game. But I give all these guys full marks for buying in to the team. They know we have a good team here. Um, they see the talent on the team. They know we've had a really good season. So they understand the challenges of getting in, getting a job and, and, and playing in the lineup. But again, they've worked very, very hard. You look at David Gustafson, hasn't played much. We give him those games. He did outstanding. Cole, again, Cole went in and did an outstanding job for us. And we know, again, we know Nate and Colin are sitting there ready to go as well. Uh, so we're, we're fortunate to have the depth. And we're fortunate that those guys are handling it like true pros. All right, there's Bones on uh, the buy-in. Uh, of course, the Seattle Kraken uh, are uh, not going to the playoffs after making it last year. Here's what uh, the head coach expects from the visitors tonight. A very competitive game. They, they've been playing very aggressively. They're a fast skating team, and they're putting pressure on the uh, on the, in the, the opposition every time they play. They, but again, they have good speed, they have good depth, and they're playing a very fast, up tempo game. So, um, yeah, there's some guys probably fighting for jobs over there. But more importantly, the team that made the playoffs last year and, and won around, and they're all disappointed in their season. Uh, I'm sure they all want to finish this season on a very high, positive note. And they've been playing very hard and very well, and that's the type of game we're, we're talked about this morning with our guys and the type of game we expect. All right, a um, little bit more from Bones uh, heading into tonight's game. And one of the most interesting topics, frankly, for us, I think amongst Jets' discourse over the last sort of month plus has been the emergence of Logan Stanley. Uh, the critics have been kind of quieted. He's played his best hockey as an NHLer. The team has been winning. And it seems like he's cemented a spot in the lineup. Uh, Bones talked about the Stanley Sandberg defense pairing this morning as well. 
I give Stan a lot of credit for again. He, he missed a lot of time during the uh, bef during the first half of the season, but when he got in, um, he he did what he needed to do to make his presence felt in the lineup. He's physical, and he, he made smart, easy plays with the puck. So we were breaking the puck out, but he was a big force around our net, uh, and he's a big force in the corners in terms of ending plays. So. Uh, but we could tell he was far more comfortable on the left. So now, you, okay, Dylan, you try the right, right? Uh, and, and Dylan Sandler, well, so uh, it's always tough for a, a young player to go over to that far side, uh, the offside. But uh, Dylan has handled it well. Uh, they're both big guys. They're, they're, they're not spending a whole lot of time in their zone because they're ending plays and they're moving the puck to the forward. So it was trial and error. And we tried staying on the, on the, on the right. We wanted to keep his physicality in our lineup so okay let's try this and it's and it's just worked out so far and uh you know of course i mean we talked about the the, the four game road trip through the central division and in particular those final two games against dallas and colorado and what a test they would be um, for the entire club certainly things went could not have gone any better they did not allow a goal they scored 10 uh but bones was asked if the last two games have sort of solidified the Stanley Sandberg pairing in the lineup. We kind of go game by game with every lineup decision we make. We do, but yeah, he's he's handled it well, and you, and you give him credit for that because he's getting he had long stretches where he wasn't playing. Then when he got in, he played a couple of games, and we said, "Okay, Stan, you, you've played well enough to you're not going to sit for another two weeks. <clears throat> you're going to play." So just you know, and he was still in and out then. But the last time he came in, um, I mean, again, he had a couple of scraps to uh, keep the opposition uh, honest and and give him uh, full marks for that. All right, so 54 and 64 back as a pairing tonight as the Jets look to clinch home ice. Um, and we, it's funny talking about just the incredible offensive numbers, 100 assists for McDavid, 70 goals potentially for Matthews if he can get one tonight. Um, the fact that one or two of Kucherov, Panarin, McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon, two of those five players won't even be finalists for the Hart Trophy Oh, and don't forget about Connor Hellebuck. And Hellebuck's numbers, I think, even more impressive because of the upsurge in scoring around the league. Um, Headley's locked on the Vezda, but most importantly, locked on the playoffs. He spoke earlier and uh, talked about uh, you know where the team is at right now and the back-to-back -back shutouts by he and his partner, Laurent Brassois, in Dallas and Colorado. Yeah, I think that just speaks to our games and our team game. The guys in front of us played phenomenal in those games, and our details were so good. And LB and I have very similar style, and you know when, when we're bouncing ideas off each other, it just feels like we're the same out there. So to do it in back-to-back -back fashion like that is uh, is a good testament to both of us. All right, there's Connor Hellebuck. Now, the one thing we will be paying close attention to over tonight, as well as the, the Thursday when the Jets play Vancouver is the goals against number because the Winnipeg Jets are four goals up or have given up four goals less than the Florida Panthers. But the Panthers have one final game and the Jets play two. Um, tonight we'll have a big part of that and we'll know what the scenario is going into the game against Vancouver uh, on, uh, on Thursday night. Uh, but Connor Hellebuck was asked about the quest for the Jennings Trophy. Yeah, that one, I've always viewed that as kind of a team, a team award. So, and the guys worked hard in here for that. Uh, it would be awesome for them to, to be part of that. And um, I think LB is, is part of it just as much as I am. I don't know if, if we were to win it, if he would get his name on it. I don't think he would, but he definitely deserves to be on there. All right, Connor Hellebuck on a topic we actually spent quite a bit of time talking about. Unfortunately, we'll not get the 25 games to officially be on the trophy. Uh, but both of them, I'm sure, will have a hand in trying to win that trophy in these final two games of the year. Um, Hellebuck also talked about how their game looks now in his mind compared to uh, that streak of, what, 35 games of three goals or less back leading to uh, December. It's a matter of a, a five five man detail when they're on the ice. Um, and it, it's little mistakes like line changes and turnovers that make a big difference this time of year. And I think you see us managing the game very well in that aspect. So 
our team game looks pretty similar, but our, our mistakes aren't nearly as costly. All right, so uh, there's uh, there's a little bit more from Heli. As I said, very very cerebral individual, thinking about every angle of uh, the game as well as his job. Uh, but you know, from a team perspective, Hellebuck sort of expanded on how they got back and figured out the details, as he mentions, are so important. Like I was saying, the like the little things like line changes and turnovers of the blue lines, that makes a big difference. And not only that, being in the right position or where guys expect you to be early. If you're just drifting in there, some when guys get a chance to look and check you off, if you're not there, you're not there to them. Um, so even if you get there, you're still not there. So little things like that, it, it makes a huge difference. Um, it, it turns your mistake into a little mistake and not a costly mistake, which is goals against. And how did this team lock in so well on the details, do you think? You know, I think we were all... During that stretch, we weren't winning a whole lot of games. We were all searching in our own games, like, what could I be doing differently? And then we had a really good video session at the very end of that, that in instead of, like, guys being mad at themselves or mad at each other, it was more of the monkey off our back. Oh, that's what we're doing wrong, and that's what we need to be doing differently. Um, at least for me, that's what it felt like. And um, ever since that moment, it was all smooth sailing from there. <laughs> All right, Connor Hellbuck, always the most fun guy to listen to. Here's one more from Helly on uh, you know, We talked about that recent skid, six in a row before the six-game heater they carry into tonight's game with the potential of clinching home ice against the Seattle Kraken. Um, you spoke on if it was good for them to go through some adversity leading into this part. I don't think you can look at a single team in this league and say they had a perfect season. You know, you, you, go, you have ups and downs all the time, and Playoffs is one of those things where you want to be hot at the right time. Um, I've been in the league long enough to, to know it and feel it. Uh, we walked into St. Louis when we had a really good team, and you know they got hot at the right time. Look what they did. So I think our, our main focus is ourselves right now. Um, feel right and don't lose it. All right, there is uh, Connor Hellebuck, and uh, let's get a little Mason Appleton in here as well. I'm uh, Appleton, a mainstay alongside Adam Lowry. We'll have... Nino Niederreiter back on the left side after David Gustafson filled in admirably on the road trip. Uh, Apple spoke about uh, the team being healthy heading into these final two games and next week. You know, these last two, obviously, we're fighting to, you know, get a point and get home ice, but at the same time, obviously, health is everything. So, uh, yeah, these last two, we've got, you know, a healthy lineup, and, you know, our team feels pretty complete right now, and uh, we're just going to try to keep it rolling and keep playing the same way we've been because, uh, you know, once we got off that losing skid, I thought we played a lot of good hockey these last, you know, week and a half or two weeks here. Mason Appleton and Remo, a much better hat than we've seen in plenty of these uh, dressing room interviews. I think Mace got the memo or uh, maybe maybe leaned on them a little bit for, uh, for a better look than uh, a few of them that had been ro rolled out. Yeah, I'm curious what the playoff merch is going to be. We see players wearing, like, yes. playoff hoodies. There's going to be a big eye on that. But as far as the hats, you know, we see some of these hats where the logo is, like, you need a magnifying glass to see it. Or they, like, print out, like, a little sticker and paste it on. But this is a nice hat. Looks like it's got a blue bill, navy, main part, big Jets logo. You can see he's got a little number 22. This is a winner, this hat for me. There's some that we've seen, Huss, that are... Pretty abominations bit. absolute like, abominations this one's good so credit to appleton for uh you know uh, a better choice than although i don't not sure whether these guys have have a choice they're often probably just handed I, hats to uh, to wear in these interviews i actually want to know i'm so curious like how it works like is there just like a bag of merch where they just go in and take like i loved at the um skills competition you see like everyone would wear a different hat and they would be tossing them to the fans so I do want to know, like, that's something that I would want to know how it works. Like, how do they, like, I'm sure, you know, I talked to Jamie Thomas. He's like, yeah, I only have Jets shirts at a home. I'm like, well, like, how does it work? Like, you put it in order? Like, I want to know. I've never worked for a team. Like, how does, how do they pick the hat for the post-game interview? That's the stuff that I, that I yeah. care about, Hustler. That's so what I want to know. You, keeps you up at night. Um, uh, back to Appleton for a minute. And, and listen, his, um, 
that line, the Adam Lowry line, has been basically together all year with the exception of Nino being out for a few games. Appleton spoke to, uh, you know, the uh, consistency that they've been uh, together and played at. I think it goes to show uh, that he, you know, believes in that line and believes what we do. Uh, we're not a line that's always going to fill the score sheet, but I think we're going to, you know, defend really hard and we can shut down a lot of a lot of good lines in this league. So I think, you know, when you when you look at a line in the top six, if it's not going, maybe it's because it's not scoring or it's not defending the right way. And I think that our line always has that, uh, you know, defend first mentality, and, and he can rely on us in uh, those types of situations. So I feel like we've kind of been, you know, steady Eddie on that line and. Uh, Obviously, he respects the way all three of us play, so I think that uh, goes a long way to why he's kept us together. Stonewall, Dave in chat. Huss, I would listen to a two-hour fan debate about team merch. I have serious opinions. It, it, it certainly is something that incites opinions uh, from fans. One more from Mason Appleton. Uh, he just talked about what has made his line, along with Nino and the captain, so successful this year. Laos and Nino are like two two awesome players like there's so much similarities between our line and uh or between all of us and then i think it just goes to show how we can play against you know anyone in this league and and you should do a solid job obviously there's nights when you play against uh you know mcdavid or someone of that caliber that they get their ways here and there but uh if you kind of look at some of our best games when we're not when we're not scoring goals it's when we're when we're kind of shutting down uh really elite players uh you know that's kind of what we pride ourselves on and what we what we know we're good at. So, uh, yeah, I think your, your third line on an NHL team obviously needs to contribute offensively, and I think we've all done that. And then uh, they obviously got to be really hard to play against, and, you know, that's kind of our, our bread and butter, like I said. So I think that's maybe why some people are talking like that. All right, good stuff from Mason Appleton, Connor Hellebuck, and Coach Rick Bonus before tonight's Game 81 with the uh, opportunity to clinch home ice in the first round for the Winnipeg Jets against the Seattle Kraken. Mike McIntyre is going to jump on. We'll talk about that as well as the Ruck and McGrory decision in just a minute. Uh, listen, it looks like we're going to have some kind of crummy weather for a couple days, but you look ahead and spring is here, folks. And that means you can get at it. All those projects you've been thinking about for the winter and consolidated supply is there to help you with them all. As the leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, and of course, golf carts, both new and used, is the exclusive club car dealer in Manitoba. But consolidated supply has some other great options for your property, including hot tubs and amazing outdoor kitchen options. And, of course, they're also the leaders in small engine parts and repair. Uh, as we uh, change the season, there's so much Consolidated Supply can help you with for your personal property or your business. Pop by and see them at their showroom, open to the public, 1395 Niagara Road East. And you can find out more online at cte.ca. Um, Turn of the Seasons also made a busy time for Donnie and the gang down at Manitoba Battery. Now, with two locations in Winnipeg, the original on Logan Avenue and, of course, the new one on Dover Court, um, you know, farmers, people in construction, you're getting ready for a very big season for all of you. The one thing you don't want to worry as you get going is about batteries. So let Manitoba Battery allow you to shop local, get the best prices in town, period, and... Uh, They'll even deliver them to you anywhere inside the city of Winnipeg with any purchase over 60 bucks. It's just that easy. Pop by and see them either on Dover Court or Logan Avenue or the best way to get all over the Manitoba Battery massive spring sale is to go online to manitobabattery.com. And guys, if you're looking for a fresh new look heading into the playoffs in spring, it's time to get down to Modern Man Barbershop. Modern Man has you covered with great haircuts, beard shaping, sh 